Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to this Blue Collar 350 Budget Build. Before we begin this journey, I wanted all to know I made this video to document a typical low buck style Chevy 350 V8 build. I'm not a race car driver, I'm not an engine builder, not a welder, fabricator, even though I like to attempt to do these things and many other things from time to time. What I am is just a man that likes to learn and do things my own way. Because it's impossible to capture all the hours that go into building an engine, and dropping it into a car. I've tried to give you the highlights and also a few tips I found along the way. Many out there have done this. Yes, there are many ways of going about getting the same results. Many ways to skin a cat. This was just my journey and I'm hoping that it may help somebody along the way after watching it. So thanks and have fun out there. Let's do this. So one day my bass playing buddy Henry of the Tiki Creeps, he says, JD, I got this 52 Chevy. It's been sitting around for about six years. How about you putting it back together for me? So we strike a deal and here we are. With a limited budget and that hillbilly hood rat style in mind, this will be no trailer queen, no show car, not a race car. Just a cool two-door coupe that's reliable, tad ornery, and a little nasty, and freeway friendly too. Because the parts are plentiful and should be easy on our limited budget, my first choice for a drivetrain is the tried and true Chevy 350 made it to a 700 R4 automatic transmission with the overdrive. The first thing I did was find a suitable donor engine to tear down and build to what I believe to be a strong, yet somewhat mild build, reliable for years to come with plenty of power for everyday use. Like I say, not a race car, not a show car, but something fun to drive that will burn rubber when you'd like it to do such things. After tearing down that donor engine and checking the block, Research shows we have a genuine 1974 Chevy 350, two bolt mains originally from a Chevy Nova most likely. One tip, now before removing these rods from the crank, punch the cylinder number on the cap and keep the rods and caps together. They were together before removal, they should be that way upon return. Right now completely stock right down to the factory size cylinder bores. I'm pretty much good to go. This one has never been rebuilt. I like it. So we magnaflux the block, check for cracks. The block was good. Heads and crank were good too. So off to the machine shop they went. The block was bored 30 over and then cleaned and prepped for some brand new performance parts upgrades. After more research, I found a mild cam I like. Not too aggressive, but a little bit of a grunt to it and definitely better than stock. I went with the Comp Cam's 260H grind along with their matching timing chain kit, lifters and valve springs. The heads I have are 882s, which are considered decent by most. Definitely not the best or the lightest, but with some cleaning, fresh seals, and performance springs, I should be good to go with a nice mannerly compression ratio. I went with the 30 over oversized pistons. After I figured out my build specs, I hit up the summitracing.com catalog. They had everything I needed for my mild engine build, and the boxes arrived in just a couple of days. I'm always impressed with the quality of parts I get from them, the packaging, the service, the quick delivery times, all of it. With this build, as I've said, I wanted quality. I wanted better than stock performance, but I didn't want the drivetrain to eat up our light budget. Many thanks to Summit for taking care of the needs of this build. Appreciate it. Here's a complete parts list breakdown for the L Ray's Blue Collar 350 budget build. Summit may offer this complete kit at some point to make it easier to order the whole package in the future. I'm not sure what they're going to do with that, but it might be out there in the future for you. After the block, the crank, and the heads came back from the machine shop, they were all clean and prepped for assembly. The first thing I did was install the new freeze plugs, crank bearings, crank shaft, and caps. Very important to make sure the main bearing seal is facing in the correct position. This is critical. No leaks. You don't want any leaks. The stock rods were clean and the new 30 over pistons were pressed on. After installing the fresh rings from Summit on the pistons, the slugs were carefully reintroduced to the freshly cut block. This is where generous amounts of assembly lube and the numbers I stamped on the caps comes in handy. I installed my new comp cam and the timing chain set. These small tabs right here make sure that my cam bolts stay put. I then proceeded to install the new valve springs onto the cleaned up heads. Now's a good time to remember, when installing the new oil pump, do not forget to install the intermediate shaft. This is the link between the oil pump and the distributor. This is a real pain if you get your oil pan on and all sealed up. Trust me, I've been there. The freshened up heads were installed, the oil pump installed, 
Push rods installed, rockers installed and set. All bolts were torqued to spec using a digital torque wrench. And finally the Edelbrock intake manifold was installed. This little beast is now ready to be installed in the 52. After I figured out my measurements so the new V8 would fit, where it would sit to clear the firewall, the steering linkage, uh, where it would be on center, I modified the customer supplied motor mounts to fit and proceeded to install with the transmission all bolted up and ready to go. I next had to order my transmission mount. Thanks again to Summit for all the help. Henry already had a nice aluminum radiator. I did have to hit up Summit again for the matching fin valve covers and the air cleaner set. Henry wanted real bad on this thing. A little modification here and there and I was pretty much golden. Engine and transmission installed. I then proceeded to install a set of custom headers, the starter, the HEI distributor, plugs and wires. After I wired up a remote ignition key, I was ready to fire it up for the first time. And just like that, we went from a tired, no drivetrain having piece of yard art to a healthy V8 powered daily driver. Many, many, many thanks to Summit for all the great parts for this build. Always exactly what I ordered and always at an extremely affordable price point. Appreciate you guys. Stay tuned for the first Danger Ride. Thanks for watching, everybody.